start today there is a guy called creationix on twitter uh, and github he wrote uh, the basic library that not uses is called libby now he wrote a uh, same thing uh, using lua today and it's twice as fast <laughs> So it's not the JS part that is the great thing about it. It's a whole async way of programming that is the strength. So, uh, yeah. So as I was saying, like the whole async part, right? So, what what do we mean by async? So, uh, in any programming language or any program where you write, so every so you are going to have a bunch of statements, and uh, the execution is going to happen sequentially. So you execute a statement, and once that statement gets completed. The execution goes to the second statement and goes on. So, right from assembly language to any language, any high level, high level language, whatever you want to write, so it's, it's all going to follow the same parent term. Right? Uh, but in there are other uh, event based systems apart from Node.js. Uh, for example, I think if you take Python, I think we have Twister. Uh, for Ruby, yeah. there is another framework which, which does that, and for C, there is this event glyph. Which uh, basically not tries to give you an event-based model. So the so uh, the major difference between an event-based model and uh, the normal pro the normal programming parameter is that so in, in normal so you have a line so you have say print or something we like get input printed. So everything done sequentially. Right? So first you print it. Then you, and then you want to get an input from the user. So assuming that it's a command line. So maybe it's like waiting for the user to type something on the console. So what happens now is like this particular statement when the, when the control reaches here, it's going to wait. It's going to wait for any I.O. operation which is going to happen. So user input is one I.O. So there could be other I.O. Right? Maybe you probably query the DB. Or probably you want to read from a file. There, there could be like so many ways by which you can do input and output. And for all these, uh, the, 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 that particular statement is going to wait. And the, uh, the, the statement after that is not going to get executed. Right? So that's the traditional uh, programming pattern, which almost like most of the languages follow. So here, what is going to happen is uh, so if you are going to do any operation, especially an input or output operation, what it is going to do is it's not going to wait for the next for the execution to stop to come back to the next. Step. So what you are going to have here is something called a callback. So if, for example, we are going to have the same thing here, so it will be something like see <coughs> input. Then you are going to have a callback here. So this is not following any syntax. And then you are going to continue with this. So, let's assume that something like that is And here, there are only other things. So, what's going to happen is, let's assume that uh, this particular function is going to take input from the user. Right? So, what happens is, as soon as the control comes to the statement, it sets up the event, and then we, it also sets up the callback function. And then the, con the control immediately goes to the other statement and then it starts executing. Right? And so here we are waiting for the user input. Or whatever, whatever input or output operation you are going to do. Maybe like we are waiting for a file or waiting for a database to return back and all that. Right? So once that, that happens, this event gets triggered and this callback gets called. So here we are just giving an anonymous function. So it could be an anonymous function or it could probably be a function handle or whatever. So that gets invoked. And if this particular uh, code gets executed. So if you look at the, uh, and let's assume that if there are a lot of other statements here, so this also gets executed. This gets executed here as the control goes. Right? But here what happens? Beyond this statement, nothing is executed till this statement is coming. So this is a basic parallel change in Node.js. Right? It's and uh, now we'll come to the second part, not JS part, right? So the JavaScript. So uh, most of you, I think, I assume would have done some kind of JavaScript. Right? So what happens in JavaScript? Any event by itself, we use the event model, right? You you had an event listener or something like that, so which has a callback functionality. So the JavaScript language itself is has capabilities for doing event-based operations. 
So that was one of the reason why uh, this entire node or the entire async concept was implemented in uh, JavaScript. I guess uh, I read it somewhere. But I'm not sure how authentic this information is. Uh, when when uh, he, the, the person who was behind Node Node JS when he actually wanted to do something like this, he started off with the event event lib in uh, C, and uh, as in, and beyond a particular point, he felt that it's very difficult to have callbacks in C. So and I think later he considered uh, Lua, and then there were some issues with that. Then, then after that, he saw uh, JavaScript, and JavaScript since by by the language implementation or by the language feature itself had supported all these callbacks and all that, so it became a perfect match. So the author Ryan Dan, right? So the thing is, he tried doing this a uh, couple of years back also, but it wasn't working out because JavaScript design-wise was like, fine, but didn't have a good implementation. Then Chrome came up and the V8 engine came up and JavaScript became, became like insanely fast. And that's why he ported this. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. There wouldn't have been a node.js, it would have been node.lua or something. It happened because of V8. Okay, so now that's the other part, right? So this is the concept conceptual wise, and this is like the async part, this is the JavaScript part, and then how we are currently it's implemented. So the implementation, uh, so as you all know, Chrome when it uh, became as an open source project, they had this JavaScript engine called V8. So, uh, in a crude sense, you can compare it to a compiler, which can take any JavaScript program, compile it, and then run it. Compiler press probably an interpreter. Compiler may not be the correct uh, analog here. It is a compiler. Just in time compilation. No, I'm just like saying, uh, not talking about weird, but you know, from a high level, like, just like trying to give an analogy of JavaScript, V8, and maybe C and GC. Oh yeah, it's quite similar to how people work in Java world. Right? Yes, so it's, then it's more like there a, is a garbage collector and everything. So it's more like an interpreter plus compiler that you can uh, think of. So what happens is uh, it basically uh, when you give a JavaScript program to it, it, it compiles it, it or it's not just compiling it, it, it interprets it and it's gonna run it, right? And V8 is exceptionally fast, and and uh, because of that. And, and, uh, and one more important feature of V8 is that it, it's very pluggable. So the entire Chrome code base, if you look, the V8 engine is like you know is separate from the other uh, Chrome codes, the other Chrome codes uh, code part, which actually displays the window and stuff like that. So what he did was he took the V8 code base and then uh, you know wrapped it out around around the event lib uh, library of C. So, uh, so essentially what happens is uh, you write your code in JavaScript which gets uh, run by this V8 engine, right? not on the browser context as a separate process itself. So that's how your node code is going to run. Right? So that's about node, the JavaScript part and the implementation. And um, I don't know, question about like how the string works. Like uh, we have the callback function uh, method sometimes, right? It's like if the file upload functionality or something like that, if it's resolved and So that will be pushed to callback function. So that will take care of that. So finally, at the end of that, we need to communicate again to browsers. Okay, so you're talking right? about a web server or any server implementation. Uh, when you upload the file from the from an website, mm -hmm. so it will go to node there mm -hmm. and then it will process it. And the callback function will uh, return a message to the browser. Okay, so so how uh, it yeah, So I understood your question. So the thing is, Node.js is not a web. It's not just a web server. Hmm. So that's what I'm trying to check. So uh, my question is like, uh, how streaming works? Like streaming, it has to return the like client ID or something, right? Like two websites so far, two web pages. <laughs> so from one page, I am uploading the file. Okay. So that has to retain which browser has uploaded. Uh, yeah. So let me come to that. So before that, Node.js is not just a uh, is not just a web server. Okay. So you can write a web server on Node.js. So if you typically take uh, take any web programming uh, combination, right? You have an Apache server, you have a PHP a scripting language, or probably you have a Python with some framework and all that. Right? So Node.js is going to be is going to actually have the entire stack. So even the web server is going to be on top of Node.js. So you are actually writing a web server, not just the application program on top of it. Right? 
so to come to your point, so what happens is when you are implementing a web server, uh, every time when there is a request that comes, that would be that itself would be a callback. That itself would be a separate, uh, I wouldn't say separate process, but you can. Uh, so what now happens is, uh, let's say, let's take the same example, right? So this is to get input. This is like when a client client request comes. Okay? So there is a callback which gets assigned to it, and then the web server is free to accept calls again. It goes out of it, and the control is inside, and this gets executed. And once this is done. It, it gives a response back to the client. Okay. So the main advantage here is that you can, so the actual thread or, or the actual process which is actually handling the client request, right? It can still continue going on. It can still process other client requests. So there will be things happening parallel. So every, every client would probably get a call. Back. So uh, that's a major advantage of uh, Node.js when you implement a server. Right? So um, I guess like there are a lot of implementation for web servers, uh, even XMPT XM servers. XM so is your question that how do you retain, when a callback comes, how do you retain the previous information on how to relate it back, right? Yeah, That's what the question is. Uh, so do you understand? The one instance of the client will remain free. Yeah, so do you, do, you, do you have a program in Python? Yeah. So you understand Trojans? Yeah. What happens is when the request comes, uh, before you actually uh, send the uh, request for processing, mm. you can extract out a client ID from session or whatever, mm. and that variable will be available when the callback is called. Mm. Okay, so you can just say, okay, this ID is available because of it's bound in a closure. Mm. You can say, okay, this ID is sending back this information. Mm. So information gets bound in a closure. Mm. That's all. That's all point. So here, uh, even here, right? Uh, this is this, this callback will have access to the variables which are declared outside the closure. So there's going to be a closure involved. Mm. Still have access. So here's a question. Um, we're assuming that this callback gets called in the same request, right? If you're, if you're calling it back in another request, then obviously you're not getting any context when the callback happens. No, the context is in the callback. That's what you said, right? The closure has all no, the context. No, no, I understand that, you know, but see, if the call, the, we're assuming that the callback, the event was fired within the same HTTP request. Yeah. Because if it came in a different HTTP request, then that, the whole stack has been cleared by that. Otherwise, you can just uh, basically you can uh, probably have a, some kind of a static map somewhere that's saying this client ID, uh, this is the output. By default, you keep it down. When the first thing is done, you put it in the output back in there. And hmm. he refreshes the page or something, you can get the same client ID for the session. And you can send them back. Okay, so you use the session to track. You can, you can use session. Or there's another way. You can probably have, uh, you can uh, map the client side, the, the session ID or something with. Uh, with the, so there's something called uh, server side, server side, side events now, using web sockets and all. So you can actually send even to the to the client saying that look, the work is done. Uh, you can pick the data up now. So you don't actually have to wait for the next refresh. Okay. You can actually map a web socket to a client ID. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that happens if you want to do web sockets. But if you're just like want to think about from a traditional web server analog, right? So in a traditional web server, apart from sessions like if there are going to be multiple requests from the same client over a period of time, all of those requests are technically not related, right? So for a request there is a response, that's it. So the whole idea having some kind of ID. If you don't want session you can have some ID in the URL. That's fine. Okay. So, yeah. so like how does it happen like in a traditional web server it either spawns of multiple processes or multiple things? Is it multi processing or it no. does it have you have you've used Apache, right? Yeah. Have you used Nginx? Yeah. So you but must have seen those graphs, right? Yeah. Apache increasing, Nginx constant. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is when you use Apache, uh, every request spawns a new process. It okay. can work either by thread or process. Oh, yeah. Depends on the idea you're using. Yeah. Uh, the whole idea is it spawns something. Yeah. And uh, it asks for some allocations for memory and all. Yeah. Yeah. When using engineering, what happens is there's a huge fat pipe somewhere <laughs> maintained by the OS. Yeah. Yeah. When the, the request URL. comes, the URL. You, you just say, okay, dude, this is a request, this is a response. Yeah. Just take the two handles, keep it together, yeah. and delegate the work to somebody else. Yeah. And the work is done, that guy comes up, picks up the request and the response, does all the manipulations, writes the response, and it's done with it. Okay. okay, so the whole part of the main process is just take the request and response object and put it in the fact file. 
Okay. That's exactly what happens in Node.js also. Okay. When the request and response, you get them, when you call, get the, you say, fire the callback and then you're done, essentially doing the same thing. You're putting the request and response in a uh, fat pipe, and when the callback is done, okay. it says, okay, now I have the request and response, I can manipulate them. Okay. Okay. And, and it's not like Apache where you have to spawn and wait till the whole process is done and then you kill the thread and spawn a new thread. Okay. That doesn't happen here. Okay. So there's no cost of spawning processes or threads, additional VMs, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's why it's fast. Mm -hmm. so that's the basic programming time, the shift in Node.js. It's not the first async framework out there. I mean, Node, Nginx has been big for quite some time yeah. for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. The whole benefit that it brought, it brought it is, uh, since you code in JS and a lot of people who already code for the browser, they can also code for the server side now. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing. You have one language across the platform. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best man benefits of this thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, Nginx and this thing are different because Nginx you're basically spawning things. Here, what you have is a single thread. No, okay, in so in Nginx, uh, you define how many workers you have. Yeah. And then each worker, uh, so the main process takes a request and response, puts it in the fat pipe. And the workers process and then operate on the request and response. But it doesn't spawn any ex additional yeah. workers. So you, have, you can specify initially yes. how many workers. I mean, for example, you can put Nginx in front of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, it's the backend that's the interesting part over here. The blocking part is not happening. Exactly. So that doesn't happen in, in uh, Nginx also. Let's say if you're serving a static file, huh. uh, it has to read the file from the file system. That's not blocking. Mm -hmm. What happens, it uses the lib event itself. Uh, and yeah. when the request comes, it puts it in the back file and says, hey OS, take up this file reading part. Whenever you're done with the file reading, give me back the file response uh, and tell me what, what the request and response objects are. And there's a callback that says, okay, this response, this uh, request, and this is the file system uh, file that I've got. Just write it back. So Nginx works quite similar. It, the only difference is the Nginx is completely written in C and all. So you can't really do a lot with it. You can't hack around with it much. This, on the other hand, is very much easier to hack around with. I mean, the, the, you can start writing TCP servers, and you can have big applications. I mean, the scale of doing things is quite wide in Node.js. That's the whole point. Also, like you know, just to clarify, Node.js as such is not the server. Yeah. Node.js as such is not a server. It's just a runtime. So right now, what he's saying is he's comparing Nginx with the web server written in Node.js. Yeah. Or web server you written in Node.js using uh, the event, uh, the event that I want all that. So Node.js is what is it then? It's, it's a runtime environment built on VM. Exactly. Yes. So VM is a VM, uh, and Node.js is just a extra uh, APIs, um, like I.O. APIs and all V8 is pure JS. V8 is just like the JVM and uh, Node.js would probably be... Like J, J2E kind of extra APIs, J2E <laughs> Probably APIs. call it a framework. No, no it's, framework. A, it's a runtime, just like J2AC has extra APIs, right? Same thing. And uh, the language is Java. Because like there's a lot of confusion about people about Node.js, especially when people talk about the advantages. Because like people generally compare it with other uh, servers, so they probably start thinking that it's a web server. But as such, Node.js is not a web server. You can write Node.js. Node do that because Node.js is like a platform where you can write web server. You do that because a benefit of using Node.js is only when you're doing I/O. That's the biggest thing. If you're not doing I/O based um, application, it's just another platform. It's just another tool. Nothing beneficial about it. The whole benefit is un async I/O. If your application doesn't require I/O, it's just another tool. You better write it anything else you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, one of the biggest disadvantages is you cannot have concurrency. Okay, the whole thing runs in one single uh, process. Okay, you cannot spawn threads. Okay. There's work going on on that, but you cannot have multi-threaded applications. So for high scale websites, like... Uh, so that's the thing. There should be bridge. Yeah. So people have this very vague definition of what high scalability is. You don't need to spawn threads to be scalable. The even model scales amazingly in uh, when you need to. You don't need... You don't need threads at all. Threads are, uh, make sense when you want to do uh, parallel computing. 
Yeah, that, then it makes sense. So you don't write really computer in in the, oh, computing no, intensive But this app is app catch, yeah. it's more like a threat, right? Uh, so it actually, the OS spawns the threats. OS is ma responsible for managing all this. For your application, there is no threat. Everything runs. So there's a saying, uh, as Ryan said, in Node.js, everything runs in a separate thread except your code. Everything is multi-threaded except your code. Your code is one single thread. So when you do a file read, when you do a file read, you do some processing in Node.js, let's say, in that case, I run four different, I try to call back, call functions, which are possibly four different, take time consuming jobs. In that case, how the whole thing works, like, so let's say um, you are hitting a HTTP API, which takes about five no, seconds. No, that's actually the call. Let's say I'm processing an image with Node.js. Okay, so you should spawn a new process and do it there. That's the thing. You should never write blocking code, otherwise you're defeating the purpose of Node. No, but if I if I make async call, like say yeah, get so a call back. Then again, you have to write an application that takes async calls. I mean, you can either read the binary data and run loops over it and process it and all, but then it will be blocking. Or you can create a separate process, or you can use a module that creates a separate process for you, okay. and let it. But you can't uh, do some kind of a callback, which which. So so what if I if I, let's say this is a function and this is a callback, which returns the process image. Okay. In that case, I'm giving an image path. Okay. It takes this function takes the something and then processes it and call. Yeah, it depends on the implementation of that function. If uh, the function implements it outside the VM, kind of. Uh, let's say if you're talking about uh, video processing using an FM impact. You can spawn a separate process saying this is the uh, input file, the FM impact take and output the um, generated file and let me know. So you can do that. Um, in that case, since you're spawning a new process completely, it will be async and you will be blocking. But let's say you started doing all that FM impact does in your code itself, then it will be blocking. But that happens as a callback, right? No. No, not always. You can write sync code also. No, no, if I can that be written as a callback. Can it? so everything can be written. So if you write this function in your code only, it will be a sync code. You just say uh, function A execute something and return me uh, value to function B. And function A, let's say if it's outside somewhere uh, in uh, let's say node or a module, it might be a sync. But if you write it inline somewhere down down there, then it will be sync. It will just jump to that function, start executing because it's part of your code. If you want it to be separate code, you spawn a separate process. So I think your question is whether you can write an async thing in the yeah. async part. You can, you can, but not in the same file itself. The moment you write it in, in the same application, it becomes sync by default. You want it to be async. You can spawn a child process, uh, give it input, get output back from it. The spawning the process is done by node, or you have to use some. No, you can. You can so actually call OS methods to spawn. You can call the OS methods. You can you can ask node to create for you also. So there's something called uh, V8 isolates. Uh, so V8 the, the JavaScript engine is being used. Right now it's like one huge VM in a process. That's it. What uh, in V8 3.1 something? I think they have come up with many VMs in a single process. So after that, you don't have to create processes anymore. Uh -huh. Probably in Node 0.6, you'll have the same VM, uh, with same process with multiple VMs. So it'll be much faster. The cost of inst uh, instancing a process won't be there. VMs are already there, you just start using them. It's like the pro benefit of engine. It already has the kind of, kind of. It already has a worker thing. But it's not even it's not even multi-process. It's just single process, multi-threaded. Yeah. And you can pass messages around, like uh, like some active model and all. You just like immutable message. You pass the message and it's going to pass it back a message. That kind of thing. So you can do all that uh, probably in some more time. Writing a sync code in your application itself in some more time. Right now if you want a sync code, you have to extract it out into a separate binary. Separate code. Either binary or your own code will be fine. You can have code but you can just like probably not put it as a yeah, another, another application. Node one dot js calls uh, spawns node two dot js. Okay. Okay. But you can have callbacks inside the callback, right? So yeah. ultimately, you can in a way write a async code inside. The the whole idea of async is not just callbacks. The whole idea of right, async is the function you're calling so itself should not take should not be, should not be consuming your current thread. Okay. 
it should be spawning its own thread working as a returning back. That's all again. Just because there's a callback doesn't mean that it will be a sync. Yes. Please. Guys, this is please tell. Uh, no intro. <laughs> so that was. And uh, one more thing to add to is like, so if you want to pull some external web service, pass it, all those things, Node.js would be easy, easiest one. There are a couple of libraries like DOM. Concurrency problem is there. Okay. You cannot write concurrent applications in your case. I mean, you can, you can attempt to, but uh, you probably won't be able to. No, but again, if you're writing a very simple counter, it will work. Mm -hmm. Problem will start happening if you spawn like four instances and you share this variable across. Mm -hmm. Problem is, uh, we cannot write multi threaded applications which can be concurrent. That's why concurrency is still not there. People have tried a concurrency, the internal fork we have at Yahoo has concurrency, but it's highly debatable that if it works or not. Okay. So you cannot write highly concurrent applications, that's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. so it's not good for writing enterprise business oriented applications which have transactions in blah blah. I would probably say that uh, I mean, unless there is a good reason for Node.js to be used, probably not use Node.js. It is an only good tool if you want a high I IO based application. Yeah. So it. probably most websites would be fine with whatever. Yeah. You can write a uh, so if you're writing uh, PHP code, continue with it. The only benefit you can have from Node is let's say we upload a file and it has to be processed. Give it to Node. It won't be spawning multiple processes in Node. You can just you can create a message queue. It's great for creating message queues. Yes. Anything which is async will be exactly. It has a one purpose and it's great at that. So like if you're writing an application you, you could use like essentially a Python in front of Node.js, right? Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are, I think there's a Node.js model for WSGI, so you can use it as a front end instead of engineering or Apache. Yeah. 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 Let's have you wanna share your experiences using Node.js? Node.js rocks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in case no one knows it yet, uh, JS4 website is in Node.js. Yeah, completely in Node.js. Yeah, it's got no good reason to be in Node.js. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely in uh, Node.js. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, after three weeks, it actually uh, crashed yesterday for the first time. Right. It's running single process, no issues, nothing. Was it traffic like? Not that great, but it's <laughs> crashed because it, uh, the processing IRC logs to a remote server. Yeah. Uh, and, and there was some network glitch and it failed there. And I haven't handled that error. Really, so. what's a typical number of thousands? I'm sure we're getting more than thousand each per Probably not. But we can look at the stats. Yeah, it's not that big. Why is it not? Also, we, have, we, have, we have not actually publicized the JS4 website so far. You know, the people who have seen it are those who accidentally walked and you know found a site. Okay. So, 
I guess once you fix up the last few things today, we'll start actually sending the URL out to people to go and have a look at it. Last week. Okay, guys, I guess we are done. Hey, Aunt, say hello. Hello. So, yeah, the light's bright to bright behind you. Okay, I'm going to shut off. <laughs>